Hello and welcome to your Virgo full moon deep dive video with me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. This event occurs on the 27th of February at 8.17 a.m. Universal Central Time. Now, I'm going to explain the event itself in terms of the symbolism of a Virgo full moon, but I'm also, as usual, going to explain the wider circumstances of what that birth chart uh, created at that point of the full moon. So there's a much bigger dimension than just the full moon in Virgo facing the sun in Pisces. Also, I'm then going to go on to explain the prospects for the following two weeks for each of the 12 zodiac signs. So please stay with me. I will share some timestamps, but please stay with me for those. Now, if you've yet to watch one of my videos before and you would like to connect with me personally and have a one-to-one -one consultation, please see underneath this video where you can check out my testimonials and also the way I work. Or if you'd like to access more serious astrology and go above your zodiac sign in a more affordable way, please check out my special offer. This is for a 12-month forecast, a character analysis, 30% off based on your unique birth data, totally individual to you. And the information for that is also contained beneath this video. So on the screen, we have the wheel. And you can see when this event occurs that the sun and also the moon are at eight degrees, 57 minutes. It's just the sun, of course, is in the glorious Pisces and the moon on the other side of the wheel, 180 degrees, absolutely equidistant, we have the moon. Now the moon in Virgo is very much about precision and order. And if we look at the ascendant for this chart based on the location of Greenwich, we can see that it's actually at 26 degrees, 49 minutes Aries. And the interesting thing therefore about this overall wheel is that it does mean that the planets are represented by the houses that are very much akin to the energies of each zodiac sign. So the moon's in uh, sign six of Virgo, but also in house six too. So also we can see just above the moon there at 26 degrees 49, just to break that rule almost immediately, but we do have the part of fortune, which can be very helpful, exactly pretty well on the descendant. So our fortune for the next couple of weeks can come from relating, which is very much to do with the seventh house, to others as best we can. But on the other side of the heavens, you can see there is a big clustering of energy in the twelfth house which is very Piscean. So this is very much about what we don't necessarily see, things that are less tangible, more of the ethereal plane. So we have Venus here. Now Venus likes being in Pisces. It's very gentle. If this was a birth chart for someone, we'd be saying that the sun was conjoining with Venus. It's not a, a very tight, uh, a, a tight uh, conjunction because the sun, as you can see, is nearly nine degrees. And so it's about a seven degree gap, but it is there. So the potential to embrace in terms of how we relate to others are uh, potential for more spiritual healing, which is very much represented by the sign of Pisces, is enhanced by having the sun and Venus in the 12th house. But it could make us more meditative about relationships in general. Now, interestingly, then we have a, a, a Neptune at 20 degrees 11, still in the 12th house. And of course, Neptune is one of the two rulers of Pisces. But you can see in house two, we have the North Node. And that is no longer squaring uh, Neptune within three degrees, as it had been since about the end of October, peaked on 6th of January. And I think that this is a very good news story with this particular full moon because some of the confusion, uh, dislocation, uh, certainly around information that we've all been experiencing is uh, declining from that very awkward right angle between the North Node and Neptune. We then have Ceres in this 12th house in the sign of Aries. Now Ceres is very much to do with what we want to achieve in a more masculine way. It is the god of agriculture. So in the sign 
of Aries it's about showing initiative but in the 12th house it could be about the things that we're beginning to prepare that won't necessarily give us an instant return so uh, if you're in a part of the world when you where you can do some planting that could be very positive also we have Chiron in the 12th house as well so in a simple sense we have all those planets gathered around the Sun in the 12th house of spirituality of artistry of imagination of things that are less tangible the subconscious uh, the more uh, if you like uh, less tangible plane now on the other side of the heavens we have the moon in the more practical sign of Virgo so what we're being asked to do is use the energies of the full moon in Virgo to balance the more ephemeral dreamy less precise energies that are all tucked up in that 12th house but of course packed around the energy of the Sun which is the main player so when it comes to our health which Virgo can be very much about we're being asked not to just be focused on the physical plane where the moon is nor are we being asked to only focus on the emotional plane which is where the Sun is we're asked to try and find some kind of unity between the two so you know if you do have aches and pains don't feel that they're only caused by a physical uh, a physical uh, root because the chances are that most of our health comes in some way or another from the way we think or feel or trapped emotions then on the other hand if we're someone who's very much into the more spiritual plane and we're kind of denying that it's anything physical then obviously there can be some physical things we can change for example changing our diets being less idealistic there's a lot of idealism around that Pisces influence so if something's out of balance in your welfare try not to be too idealistic try to be as down to earth as possible and grounded which is coming from that uh, moon energy now you can also see at the top of the chart in the 10th house we have uh, Pluto and in the first house we have Mars so Mars in the first house makes sense because it is the planet that governs the first sign of the zodiac which is Aries so that's showing initiative and Pluto is in the 10th house which is very much to do with power so this angle between those two is very very energizing and shows that with determination and willpower a lot of things are possible we also have a cluster of energy in the 11th house which again is very in keeping with the sign of Aquarius which is where we have Saturn Mercury and Jupiter so the 11th house is asking us to connect collectively to others to embrace our individuality but see how we can actually make that work with others what's the catch well it's the ongoing square between Saturn and Uranus and that's going to go on for the first uh, seven months of this year and the, the last five weeks it's a tough one because they're both the rulers of Aquarius one's progressive Uranus one likes to stick with what it knows which is Saturn and therefore we've got a lot of tension and a, a lot of resistance and a lot of um, a lot of brittle energy which has dominated this year so far for a lot of us and I think these two are also leading to some ecological events um, uh, or earth events whether it's tsunamis earthquakes dams bursting glaciers melting all that kind of stuff I think it's very much to do with uh, Saturn squaring with Uranus and also we've seen that some power regimes whether it's in places like Belarus uh, Russia uh, Hong Kong um, Myanmar um, in terms of the farmers dispute in India we've got certain uh, citizens of the world are not happy with the way the status quo has been and they're trying to push back but just as much as they're pushing back people are being very oppressive in response so I think this is a very idealistic full moon to be honest and I think it shows that however much healing can be coming through particularly with COVID with new techniques better technology greater organization uh, most of importantly collaboration between different organizations bodies even states that's vital 
uh, we have to deliver it all in quite a realistic way, which is where the moon is in the sign of Virgo. So that means that we have to take responsibility for the details of situations, but at the same time, we can't get so caught up with that that we're ignoring our more uh, tender side, our more anxious side, or our, our subconscious, which is definitely governed by all those planets being in, and asteroids being in the 12th house, or comet in the case of Chiron, and the sun in the case of the sun being a luminary, we have to make sure that we're finding some kind of balance. So I think it's possible that over the next couple of weeks, we could see some kind of changes around COVID in some countries. So some countries might start to get a bit more organized in dealing with it and a bit less swept away. Remember when this crisis kind of manifested itself, the moon was conjunct, um, the solar return moon for 2020 was exactly conjunct Neptune. And every time that seems to have happened since then, because obviously that's happening once a month, we seem to get more bad news or there has been this blur of not great clarity around the way it's either been organized or responded to. Now, for the individual zodiac signs, I think for Aries, uh, this is an opportunity for you to be in touch with your instincts. And funnily enough, although you have a reputation of sort of just going for it, living in the moment and being very bold and daring, you do listen to your hunches. And it's one of the great things about Aries people. But like all of us, there may be times when you actually ignore your hunches or what your inner voice is saying, your sixth sense. So I think on this particular chart, there could be a part of you that has been feeling a little reflective, wanting to step back from others. Uh, but there may be some practical things you do need to attend to. And even if there's part of you that's been disinclined so much to mix and mingle, even if that the mingling and mixing has been uh, quite limited uh, because of COVID restrictions, but if that's been your instinct generally in your life, I think recently you may have felt like, like really sort of locking yourself away and having a big think and working things out. And I think the full moon here is just saying, look, uh, there may be some issues to do with your work. Uh, there may be some gossip doing the rounds at work. Watch out for someone who tends to be very skilled at playing office politics, but not necessarily being particularly sincere. Now, Taurus, with Mars in your sign, along with Uranus, but Mars in particular forging that awesome angle to Pluto, if you have got some key objectives that you're working towards that you're very clear about, I think this chart is very positive for you. I think it's just saying that time management may be a bit of an issue. Keeping all of the people happy all of the time is really quite difficult at the best of times. Uh, but I think for you, if you've got a very clear idea in your mind about something that you want to achieve, you can go for it with a plum at the moment. It's just possible that you may be giving something up in order to get something new. That may resonate quite strongly with you. Now, Gemini, because you've got all those planets or all those positions in the 10th house for you, which is very much about your work interactions with the world at large, how you earn a living, how you're perceived by people, and the moons in the part of your horoscope to do with your more personal emotions, it's possible that work is getting in the way of a need to spend more time with your uh, kin, family, uh, own personal inner world, your home, or it could be vice versa. I think it's possible on the whole that you could be making progress in the material plane. And it may be something that uh, had stalled a little bit, an old project or plan that really starts to revive itself much more productively for you now. So I think on the whole, this can be a full moon which can see you make progress as long as you're looking after how you feel about things and not just getting caught up in the neat ambitions. Now, for you, Cancer, this particular full moon is in your sector three, or house three, everyday communications. The sun and all that gang that it's with, particularly Venus, is in uh, house nine. Uh, so, and Neptune's been there since 2012, as I mentioned before. So you'll need to sort of 
expand your horizons and travel and, and search out different cultures and different information and download different approaches has been strong for really quite some time and that's being emphasized. There may be something that you're intrigued to do or you're wanting to book something for, perhaps around the holiday, and maybe because of the COVID situation, you can't do it at the moment, which is leaving you feeling a bit frustrated. But I think the direction of travel for you is about adventurism. Now, Leo, uh, this particular set of influences of the sun is in the eighth house. What you share, a business, insurance, pensions, long-term financial planning, but where you're most invested. And the moon's in the uber practical everyday sector of finances. So it's making sure that everything's running sweetly in that department and you're not uh, being too loose with your resources that are going to affect you going forwards. But I think you can be um, very uh, aware of uh, your practical dimension. I think part of that is because that you had such a lot of influences in that area in 2020. You still have Pluto there. And if you have got a job in your mind that you really want to go for, I think that Pluto's angle with Mars can see you punching through any uh, sort of uh, potential barriers and actually being very driven to achieve your goals. And the goal that you get could be an improvement in your financial situation. But as ever with Neptune in the mix, if there is any kind of uncertainty or confusion about what you're being offered, check the small print. So details are important in terms of marshalling your resources, but you still do have uh, that square between Saturn and Uranus, which is going to be going on a long time. Your relationship sector then is asking you some serious questions about whether you want to be with the person you're with for the long term. Or if there's someone you're attracted to, it's possible that there's something you can't control that's inhibiting your freedom to engage with that situation in the way that you would like. However, it is possible that um, a relationship situation can move forward because Mercury and Jupiter are very closely linked together. So, you know, it is a, a case of glass half half uh, full, not half empty. Now, Virgo, obviously this full moon occurs in your sign. So I think for you at the moment, the principal thing that you're thinking about is relationships. And if relationships seem to be uh, based on the other person's needs and you feel that you're always having to bend into those needs, this could be a critical point for you, particularly with Uranus and uh, Saturn in a right angle, because they're emphasizing a potential for resentment if it does feel it's all give and no get. Having said that, if there is someone that you really think is larger than life and making your pulse race, that link between Pluto and Mars, whoa, that creates a lot of sexual attraction, a lot of potential for hearts to beat faster. But I think essentially what you're looking for is a balance between what you will give and get in the relationship dimension. Now, Libra, this full moon occurs in a tricky location for you, your 12th house. So it's in, in other words, it's the converse of what's going on for, uh, for Aries. So for you, the moon's in your 12th house of where we can be a bit sus suspicious or a bit uncertain or doubtful. And all the planets around the sun are in the 6th house where you are sacrificing. So again, it could be a work-based situation that you have to be mindful of. But if you're trying to move forwards with a property matter, your drive to get it done is going to be absolutely fantastic. And you do have um, the glorious link of Mercury and Jupiter in the fifth house of your chart, which is very much to do with you wanting to invoke joy in your life. It's just, I think at the moment, the joy or the creativity needs to be balanced against productivity and how things are organized. And Pisces is not a sign that's blessed uh, with it, uh, you know, to be known for organisation so much, it's more about inspiration. I feel so. Whatever's going on at your at the moment, it has to work in a practical way for you. Now, Scorpio, this full moon occurs in your sector of friendships. Therefore, the Sun is in the part of your horoscope to do with a love relationship. So, in a love relationship, are you so focused on that you're not giving yourself a life outside of it? 
or because of COVID, are you spending more time with one another? That it feels a little bit sort of lack of space, that it feels a bit uh, closed in, finding it a little hard to feel that you can be yourself. And certainly Saturn in your fourth house squaring with Uranus in your seventh, points to all of that in, in spades, to be honest. And yet your modern ruler of Pluto is in a glorious link with your uh, traditional ruler. So if there is somebody that really does smart your imagination, you're likely to want to tell them in a very direct way. But essentially, I think for you, it's finding the balance around your creativity, your personal passion and individual hopes around where you connect to others. And that connection to others comes through the moon in Virgo. So a friend could be critical or your future hopes may be influenced by someone else's view or attitude to a situation. Which brings us to Sagittarius. Now you can see in house eight on the screen, Sagittarius, that we do have the South Node, Eros, and also Juno. And they're actually squaring up to Neptune. And broadly, obviously in the case of South Node, exactly opposite the North Node. But Eros and um, Juno are opposite the North Node. So we do have a kind of broadish T-square for you. What's that about, I feel? Well, the, the energy that's in the sign of Pisces for you is about you embracing the more emotional side of your nature, which you can sometimes be reluctant to do. Yet the moon is going to be in the sign of Virgo, uh, pushing those emotions to the surface, even if you're someone who's reluctant to be as open. You're much more focused on engaging with the next exciting new venture. On that note, if you are working hard, Saturn square Uranus, stress can be a problem at the moment if you're overdoing it, you're trying to sweat the details too much. And of course, the moon in Virgo is detail central. So I just think that it's important that you give yourself some time to just think about your hopes for the future uh, in terms of the... Uh, location of the moon your your hopes when i'm talking about goals and ambitions but you're always thinking about how it feels so if you're someone who's much more engaged by getting on with it and a, a degree of drama and passion which is very indicative of your sign i think you just need to be aware of how it feels that's really what this full moon is asking you to look at now capricorn of course this full moon occurs in the sister uh, earth sign as yours and the sign of uh, Virgo for you is very much about variety variety and spontaneity um, you know things are too samey which is very possible with all these Covid rules and regulations it could be closing in on you this is a great time for you to be learning new ideas processing different information chatting to different people your finances may seem a bit limited because of Saturn and also that square with Uranus means that if you do splash out on anything, it kind of seems to be more expensive than you thought, or it might necess not necessarily have the practical benefits that you hope for. But with Pluto in your sign forge and a gorgeous link to Mars, you can strut your stuff. You know, if there is something you feel very um, ardently about at the moment, whether it's a subject, an interest, a new business idea, you know, you've got loads of enthusiasm and I think others can be really impressed by that. But the details, which comes through Virgo, are key. Now, Aquarius, this full moon occurs across the axes of the second and the eighth house. So making sure that your financial situation is working well. Now, with Saturn in your own sign, squaring with Uranus, Something around a home or a family or an emotional matter has felt very frustrating this year. I've had this myself, to be honest. And I think it's true of a lot of Aquarius people, but it's not as bad as the last couple of years in terms of that deeply 12th house uh, dynamic that was playing out. So uh, Venus in the second solar house as it is can be good for finances. I think basically the full moon saying, look, if things are improving on the financial front, don't rush around trying to spend your gains. And it may be that something that you've been working on behind the scenes over a very long period of time can come back to you very, very positively. Uh, and it could be around something to do with where you live. Now, 
Pisces, obviously the Sun and Venus and Neptune are all in your sign, and we all ha and we have that gathering in the twelfth house. So this is a time when a lot of Piscean energies are being manifested. So I simply think that you could be accused by someone over the next couple of weeks of being too locked into your own thought processes, your own needs. You're not aware enough of how it seems to others. I think that's going to be the prevailing message. But if there is a plan for the future that really excites you, and it could be linked to travel in some way, it could be linked to a friend, there may be part of you that's really revved up, ready to go on that. But don't ignore the more sensitive and vulnerable side of your nature, because with three planets, in, including your ruler Jupiter, in your personal 12th house, you are being asked to be so much more conscious of your shadow side. And although you're very shrewd and aware of other people's shadow sides, if it's part of you that's not as well evolved, you've not been engaged in so much with personal development, I think this full moon is asking you to make progress in your individual sphere. You need to kind of be aware of where you may be a bit weaker, a bit more frightened, not quite so sure. Uh, there may be some timidity, but don't judge it. Embrace it. It's all part of you. doesn't mean to say that other parts of you aren't dashing, brilliant, amazing, uh, glorious, and successful. But I think you need to, to be embracing the wounds at the moment if you're really wanting to make progress. And as I said, someone could challenge you a bit over the next couple of weeks about how you're preoccupied or how they perceive you as being preoccupied with your own needs in the way that might hurt your feelings a little bit but it may also make you think about well why should that be so that concludes the zodiac sign forecast plus your overview for the virgo full moon thank you so much for joining me all the best and goodbye for now